Hello friends, welcome to Dungeons & Dragonfly, where I adapt various characters for use in d and I'm Dragonfly9078, and today's build is Steve. Or Alex, I guess. I mean, they're, they're kind of essentially the same. Whatever, it's the player character from Minecraft. I'm just gonna say Steve. There's really not much backstory to Minecraft, you just kind of get plopped down in the middle of the world and are left to your own devices, so what do we want from this build? Well, as the name of the game implies, there's really two things to Minecraft mining and crafting. To mine, we'll need the proper tools, as well as the capability to go exploring in the vast wilderness and make it back home safely with materials. That means we'll also need to be able to deal with the enemies that infest the land, most notably the hordes of undead. And to craft, we'll need to be able to turn the materials we mine into useful items, both magical and mundane. Looking over at ability scores, I'll be using the point buy, if you want to roll for stats, that's fine. Just make sure your dexterity, intelligence, and wisdom are high enough to multi-class. Starting off with a 15 in strength, we run around swinging swords and pickaxes all day, so we'll need some muscles. Dexterity and constitution are both 13. We're good with our hands, despite them being solid rectangles. And we don't get tired, we just get hungry. We'll put 12s in intelligence and wisdom. We need to remember all of our crafting recipes, after all. And we'll need perception and survival to make it in the wild. Then we'll finish up with an 8 in Charisma, because I really don't think Steve gets invited to many parties. He's kind of a total square. Boo! Steve is ostensibly a human, albeit an extremely angular one, so we get plus one to all of our ability scores, and we'll build our own background, taking proficiency in survival and perception, as well as with carpenter's tools and mason's tools for our axe and pickaxe respectively. We're gonna need a lot more tools than that though, so we'll start off as an artificer to get three more. Thieves tools, tinkers tools, and one other. I'm gonna say glass blowers tools so we can make windows and bottles. We also get two more skills. Arcana will help once we get far enough to start enchanting, and nature is good for figuring out what we can actually use all of our materials for. Artificers are also magical tinkerers, meaning we can give minor magical effects to tiny objects, like making them light up, play a message, or give off some sort of image, sound, or smell. Little sensory stuff like that. At second level, we start our crafting with infuse items. We can make a bag of holding for an inventory to carry our materials around in, or a chest of preserving to leave them in at our base. It'll even keep all of our food fresh for us. A pole of angling is an enchanted fishing rod, and we can apply the respiration enchantment to a helmet to let us breathe underwater for longer by making a cap of water breathing. Along with enchanting at an enchanting table, Steve is also able to brew potions at a brewing stand making him an alchemist, giving us proficiency with alchemist supplies. We can use those supplies to brew up an experimental elixir during a long rest. The elixir we brew is randomly determined from six options. A potion of healing heals 2d4 plus our intelligence modifier to whoever drinks it. A potion of swiftness increases the drinker's walking speed by 10 feet for an hour. A potion of resilience increases their AC by 1 for 10 minutes. A potion of boldness adds a d4 to any attacks or saving throws they make in the next minute. A potion of flight gives them a 10-foot flying speed for 10 minutes, and a potion of transformation casts Alter Self on the drinker for 10 minutes, changing their appearance, letting them breathe underwater, or giving them a magical natural weapon. We can only make one elixir per long rest unless we burn a spell slot to make another, and we need an empty bottle on hand, so it's a good thing we have glassblower's tools, huh? Alchemists have a couple of spells that are always prepared. Healing Word heals a creature within 60 feet for 1d4 plus our intelligence modifier. And Ray of Sickness deals 2d8 poison damage with a ranged spell attack, and poisons the creature it hits if they fail a constitution save, for splash potions of healing and poison respectively. Third level artificers also get right tool for the job, letting us spend an hour of work to create a non-magical set of artisan's tools. The tools are permanent, but they break if we make another set. We're doing things a little bit backwards, though. The ability to brew potions actually comes pretty late in Minecraft. You really need to dig into the nether for the materials. So for some ordinary non-potion-based healing, we'll need food. The chef feat rounds off our wisdom to 14 and gives us proficiency with cook's utensils. If we have time to sit down and take a short rest, we can get the ingredients together to make a meal for a number of people up to 4 plus our proficiency bonus, letting them heal an extra 1d8 if they spend hit dice during the rest. And after a long rest, or by spending an hour, we can put together more portable food, making a number of treats up to our proficiency bonus that last for 8 hours, and that give a creature temporary HP equal to our proficiency bonus when they're eaten. 5th level alchemists are alchemical savants, letting us add our intelligence modifier to the healing or damage of our alchemist spells. Though to add it to damage, the damage has to be fire, acid, necrotic, or poison. 
so it worked with our Splash Potion of Poison from earlier, as well as with our two new Alchemist spells, Flaming Sphere and Melf's Acid Arrow. Flaming Sphere conjures a ball of fire that we can move around with our bonus action. Any creature that it runs into, or that ends their turn within 5 feet of it, has to make a dexterity save, taking 2d6 fire damage on a fail, or half that on a success. Melf's Acid Arrow is a Splash Potion of Harming, dealing 4d4 acid damage with a ranged spell attack, or half that on a miss. On a hit, the target also takes another 2d4 acid damage at the end of their next turn. Sixth level is really good for our crafting. We get tool expertise to double our proficiency bonus when we use tools we're proficient with. We can make a second elixir per day, and we can craft two more infusions. The orb of direction will act as our compass, telling us which way is north, though only on the material plane. If we go to the nether or the end, the needle just spins around uselessly. And the orb of time is pretty much an exact one-to-one -one of the clock telling us whether it's morning, afternoon, evening, or nighttime, though again, only on a material plane. Seventh level artificers get Flash of Genius, letting us use our reaction to add our intelligence modifier to an ability check or saving throw that we or another creature within 30 feet of us makes a number of times per day equal to our intelligence modifier. I don't think we have quite enough artisan tool proficiencies yet, so pick up the skilled feat at level eight to get three more. Leather workers tools let us make leather armor and bind books and painters and weavers tools let us spruce up our house with some lovely paintings and banners. For healthier potioning, we get restorative reagents at 9th level. Anyone who drinks one of our elixirs gets 2d6 plus our intelligence modifier temporary HP, and we can cast a lesser restoration to cure a disease or an effect of blinding, deafening, paralysis, or poison a number of times per day equal to our intelligence modifier. It's really just milk. Drinking milk in Minecraft removes status conditions, not sure why we needed 9 levels of Artificer to figure that out, but meh. For our Alchemist spells at this level, Gaseous Form turns us or a creature we touch into a cloud of mist. They get a 10-foot fly speed, resistance to non-magical damage, advantage on physical saving throws, and can pass through tiny holes and cracks, although not through liquids. And Mass Healing Word is exactly what it sounds like, a splash potion of healing that splashes in a much wider area healing six creatures of our choice within 60 feet for 1d4 plus our intelligence modifier. Tenth level artificers are magic item adepts, letting us attune to four magic items instead of three, and quartering the time and halving the gold it takes for us to craft common and uncommon magic items. We also get two more infusions. The Ring of Water Walking freezes water under us with the Frostwalker enchantment so we can walk on water. And the Repeating Shot is a plus one bow enchanted with infinity, letting it generate its own arrows so we never run out. I think we're pretty set on crafting for now, though, so let's go out mining by jumping over to Ranger for a bit. Multiclassing into Ranger gives us one skill from the Ranger list, like animal handling to tame any wolves or cats we run into. We're also a deft explorer, making us canny, doubling our proficiency bonus for our nature checks to find and use more materials than before. We'll be using the revised version of Favorite Enemy, and the best choice is definitely Undead, what with all the skeletons and zombies running around, giving us plus two to our weapon damage against Undead, as well as advantage on survival and intelligence checks about them. Steve doesn't really have a defined fighting style. He'll use swords, axes, sticks, fish, whatever's handy. So we'll go with a Druidic Warrior to pick up the most Minecraft spell in the game, Mold Earth. We can turn normal ground into difficult terrain and vice versa, and make shapes and colors appear on the ground. But most importantly, we can instantly excavate a five foot cube of dirt and put it down somewhere else to dig down and build up however we like. We'll also pick up some flint and steel with Create Bonfire to make a five foot square of flame that deals up to 4d8 damage to a creature who fails a dexterity save. For our ranger spells, Alarm sets down note blocks to alert us when an unauthorized creature enters our warded area. And Animal Friendship tames beasts we come across, charming them for a full day if they fail a wisdom save. If you don't want to spend a spell slot on that, though, we get Primeval Awareness at 3rd level, which tells us how animals are feeling and what it will take to calm them down, as well as letting us communicate simple ideas to them. So roaming the overworld is all well and good, but we're probably going to want to go to the nether and eventually the end as well, so we're going to become a Horizon Walker. Once per rest, we can throw an Eye of Ender as an action to tell us the distance and direction to the nearest planar portal and we can use our bonus action to target a creature in combat. The next time we hit that creature with a weapon attack on the same turn, all the damage becomes force damage, and we deal an extra 1d8 force damage as well. We also learn protection from evil and good, to 
give aberrations, celestials, elementals, fey, fiends, and undead disadvantage on attacks against us, and gives us advantage on saves against being charmed, frightened, or possessed by them. Fourth level rangers get another ability score improvement, round off strength and intelligence for more damage with our sword, and better just general overall artifice ring, then move on to fifth level for extra attack and second level spells. Spike growth sprouts sweet berry bushes in a 20 foot radius of a point we choose, making the area difficult terrain and dealing 2d4 piercing damage to creatures for every 5 feet they move in the area. And good berry harvests those bushes, conjuring up to 10 berries in our hand that each heal 1 HP and provide enough nourishment for a full day when eaten. Horizon walkers also get Misty Step, letting us toss out an Ender Pearl to teleport up to 30 feet. For our greater favorite enemy, the only real choice is Dragon giving us advantage on saves against the Ender Dragon spells and abilities, along with all the same benefits of favorite enemy, though our damage bonus increases to plus 4 against both Undead and Dragons. Our Deft Explorer feature also gives us Roving, increasing our walking speed by 5 feet, and giving us climbing and swimming speed so we can traverse whatever biome we find ourselves in. 7th level Horizon Walkers get to switch into Spectator Mode once per rest by casting Etherealness without using up a spell slot. We step into the ethereal plane, becoming invisible and intangible until the end of our turn. We can move in any direction and even through solid objects, though moving up or down costs extra movement, and if we switch out of spectator mode inside an object, we're shunted out of it and take force damage. We'll also pick up a Cordon of Arrows to set up a dispenser trap, firing a total of up to four arrows at unauthorized creatures that get within 30 feet of the dispenser within eight hours, dealing 1d6 damage per arrow if the creature fails a dexterity save. With our last ability score improvement, we'll take Prodigy for one skill proficiency, one tool proficiency, and one skill expertise. We'll take Athletics proficiency for the skill to climb mountains, Survival expertise to forage with the best of them, and Cartographer's tools to draw maps as we go. We also get to Sprint by dashing with our bonus action thanks to Fleet of Foot. We'll finish this up with a little bit more crafting as a Forge Domain Cleric. The Forge Domain gives us proficiency with Smith's tools and heavy armor so we can both craft and wear full plate armor. We can also craft magic weapons and armor with Blessing of the Forge. Whenever we finish a long rest, we can give a non-magical weapon or suit of armor a magical plus one bonus until the end of our next long rest. For our domain spells, Identify tells us what a magic item is and how many charges it has left, like a handy little label that pops up and tells us what whatever we're holding is. And Searing Smite applies the fire aspect enchantment to our sword dealing an extra 1d6 fire damage on the next hit, and setting the target on fire, for an additional 1d6 every turn that they fail a constitution save for up to a minute, or until they either pass the save or are extinguished some other way. Our capstone is the second level of cleric for channel divinity. We can use turn undead to turn all the undead in a 30 foot radius who fail a wisdom save, forcing them to run away from us. Or, since we're a forge cleric, we can use artisan's blessing, to create an object that is at least partially metal and isn't worth more than 100 GP. We lay out metal with a total value equal to that of whatever object we want to make, and over the course of an hour-long ritual, we convert all that metal into the object. It'll even create any non-metal components that it needs to, so you could lay out a bunch of metal and then still create a bunch of arrows, even though you don't have the wood or the feathers. Looking over at spellcasting, we ended up as an 11th level spellcaster, for cantrips, Light makes a torch we can carry around, Message DMs another player, Mending combines two items on an anvil to restore their durability, Spare the Dying stabilizes a creature that's dying, and Resistance and Guidance let a creature add a d4 to their saving throws and ability checks respectively. We can use Create or Destroy Water to place or pick up a block of water with a bucket, and Disguise Self to use a custom skin. Web throws out a bunch of cobwebs to hinder and restrain creatures in a 20-foot cube. The whole area is difficult terrain and lightly obscured, and the webs restrain any creature that moves into or starts their turn in the area and who fails a dexterity save. While restrained, they can use their action to make a strength check to try to break free, but then they're still in the middle of difficult terrain. We can drink a potion of invisibility to become invisible for up to an hour, or until we attack or cast a spell, and we can even grab a set of elytra and some fireworks to cast fly, to get a 60 foot flying speed for up to 10 minutes. Now that the build is complete, the question becomes, how good is it? Well, we can make practically anything given enough time and materials, with 11 different artisan tool proficiencies, along with infusions, potions, spells, and our channel divinity, 
to make items, traps, and fortifications, both magical and not. We're also highly mobile, with flying, swimming, climbing, water walking, water breathing, teleportation, and even ethereal travel to traverse whatever kind of terrain you can imagine. And we're pretty solid in combat as well. With plate armor, a shield, and a sword, we have 20 AC, or 21 depending on how we use our Blessing of the Forge, and we have access to both solid healing and a huge variety of damage types, from fire to acid to force. On the other hand, we are heavily impacted by ability score requirements. All of our stats are only 14, except Strength, which is 16 so we can wear plate armor without being slowed down, and Charisma, which is 9, resulting in low save DCs and limited uses of useful abilities like Flash of Genius. We're also pretty limited with our spells, having only 3rd level spells thanks to our multiclassing, a good number of which require our concentration, so we can only have one active. Not to mention some spells that fit the character but are, let's say, lackluster in practice, like Cordon of Arrows. And finally, we have a wide variety of damage types, but none of them actually do all that much damage. So we might struggle to put down enemies, even the tougher types of our favorite enemies. But that's just fine. The game isn't mine kill monsters, it's mine craft. And that's what we're good at. Gather materials, build a base, and fill it with cool stuff. Just don't mess with other people's things. That could cause some real grief. I hope you enjoyed the build. If you have any feedback or suggestions for characters you'd like to see me build, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching, friends. I will see y'all later.